Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to cover part two of making a bass guitar. And where I left off in the last episode is I had finished preparing all the blanks. Uh, I have a blank for the body, the top, the fretboard, and the neck. And what I'm going to do in this episode is pick up from there. And if you haven't watched the first episode, I'll put a link up here so you can go back and check it out if you'd like to. But where I'm going to pick up now is I need to do some very careful measuring and marking on each of the blanks in preparation for doing all the CNC work. Now, a lot of folks have a misconception about uh, cutting guitars with a CNC machine. Uh, they think all you have to do is take the blank, clamp it down to the CNC machine, and then press a button, kick back, and watch it cut out the different parts for the guitar. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. There is a tremendous amount of work that has to be done prior to even um, sh uh, switching on the CNC machine. And what I'm going to show you in this episode is how I have to measure and mark the blanks so that when I'm ready to CNC, I have a reference point that I can work from in order to accurately carve each side of the blank in order, in order for those two-sided operations to be registered with each other. Because that's where things can go wrong. If you don't have um, everything precisely measured and marked, when you flip your blank to carve the other side, things can go completely off kilter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure and mark these, and then I'm gonna move over to the CNC machine and start actually uh, carving each part. So I'm not gonna get into you know, a lot of detail about the whole measuring and marking process, but I hope that as you watch this video, you'll see and kind of get an idea of what it is I do and that will help you to understand the whole process of, of using a CNC machine to cut all the different parts of a guitar. So let's get started. The first thing I have to do is mark the center line of each blank, and I'll do this on both sides of the blank, making sure that the, the center lines are exactly opposite from each other. The fretboard only needs to have a center line drawn on the top side since I'm not going to be machining the back side. The uh, bookmatch walnut top is going to be treated the same way as the fretboard. Since I'm not going to be flipping it over to machine the back side, all I have to do is mark the center line on the side that I've chosen to be the top or the front of the guitar body. The neck, like the body, is going to be machined on both sides, so I have to draw a center line on both sides, and those center lines have to be exactly opposite of each other. So to do that, I always measure from the same edge as I mark both the uh, um, center line positions. After I had marked all the center lines, the next step was to mark reference points. And in this case, on the body, the reference point is going to be right in the middle of the center line on both sides. The purpose of these reference points will be explained in a little bit more detail later on. For the neck blank, I have to create three different reference points, one on the top side and two on the back. Now, the one on the top side is right where the angle of the headstock meets the rest of the neck. And I'll draw a line across there, and where that line crosses the center line on the top is where that reference point begins. And then what I'll do is I'll transfer that line to the back side, and I'm going to do this from two positions, one where the square is resting on the uh, fretboard side of the neck, and then the other is where the uh, square sits on the angled headstock portion. And I'll transfer those lines to the back and then connect them together. And then where those two lines cross the center line of the neck blank is where the two back reference points are. And I know that sounds really confusing and I apologize for that. 
And hopefully as you watch me, as I set this up to be cut on the CNC machine, it'll start to make sense and you'll begin to understand why I have to have these different reference points. Okay guys, now that I have all my center lines and reference points marked on all the blanks, I'm ready to fire up the CNC machine and start carving some guitar parts. The first part I'm gonna carve is the fretboard. Then I'll make the neck. And then once I'm finished with the neck, I can actually bring these two pieces together, the fretboard and the neck, and then measure the thickness of the heel. And with that information, I can determine how deep to make the pocket. And then I can, if necessary, modify my G-code file for the body and then start carving the body. So let's get started on this fretboard. First thing I got to do is make sure that the center line that I drew on the fretboard blank is exactly parallel with the y-axis movement of my CNC machine. To do this, I'm going to use a sharpened pointer bit, which I'll chuck into the router. And then what I can do is I can position the point of that bit directly over the center line and then make whatever adjustments I need to the position of the board to get it perfectly lined up with that pointer bit. And then I'll move the router back and forth along the entire length of the fretboard and at each end I'll double check and adjust if necessary the position of that center line so that it's perfectly lined up with the point on that bit. And then once I'm satisfied that that center line is perfectly parallel to my y-axis movement of my router I can then tighten down the clamps. There are several cutting operations involved in making a fretboard, and the first one will use a 23 thousandths inch diameter two flute spiral upcut bit to cut the fret slots. So here I'm swapping out my sharpened pointer bit with the uh, tiny little fret slot cutting bit. After positioning the router in the XYZ zero home position, I can then uh, send the G-code file to the machine and start cutting those fret slots. It'll take about 45 minutes to cut 21 slots. And the cool thing about cutting slots this way is I can actually stop short of the edge of the fretboard and then nip the tang of the frets when I install it and there's no uh, tang that can run the uh, risk of sprouting out the sides when the humidity levels change. After cutting the fret slots, I can swap out that fret slotting bit with a larger eighth inch diameter two flute spiral up cut bit. And I'll use that for the remaining operations. And the next one is going to be drilling the holes for the fret marker dots. After each cutting operation, I have to make sure that the router returns to the XYZ zero home position. That way I can be assured that each cutting operation will be precisely registered. Now here I'm cutting the, uh, the final operation, which is the radius as well as the perimeter shape of the fretboard. A lot of my cutting operations are actually two different operations combined into one. They start with a rough carve, which hogs out most of the wood that needs to be removed, and then it's followed up by a more finely detailed finishing pass, which smooths out the wood to the point where the only thing I have left to do after the part has been cut is some final finish sanding with like a 220 grit sandpaper. Whenever I cut a perimeter shape like a fretboard or a body or even a neck, I have to use tabs to keep the part from flying off the machine once the router has cut all the way through the thickness of the material. So before I can uh, continue with my work, I have to cut those tabs.
to liberate the fretboard from the blank. And once I've liberated the fretboard, all I have to do is grab some 220 grit sandpaper wrapped around a block of wood and sand away uh, some of those um, remaining tab nubs that are still on the sides of the fretboard. Okay, so that's basically uh, the technique I use for positioning my blanks on the CNC machine before I start to uh, carve them. And uh, the one difference that I know will come up because people will ask about it is how do I register my two-sided carving? And it's really pretty simple. As long as I have an accurate center line drawn on both pieces of the blank, I can use my sharpened pointy bit chucked into the router and I just, you know, follow the center line with the router, moving the body or moving the blank until it's positioned so that the bit follows that center line, just like I showed you with the fretboard. And I have to do that on both sides. Um, you know, I'll, I'll set up one side, do the carving operations, and then I'll flip it over and then realign it to that center line. And as long as I'm aligned to that center line, the blank will be square with the machine. However, where it really becomes a critical issue is making sure that I position the router at the XYZ0 home position to start with. And that's where my reference lines come into play. And when I'm carving on one side, once I have it, the, the blank aligned with the machine, I'll set that point right over where my reference line crosses that center line. And I know from my plan exactly how far it is from that reference point to the XYZ home position. So I can just input those numbers and move the router to where it needs to go to be in the XYZ home position. And then I can carve it. And then once I've done, once I'm done uh, carving uh, the top side of it, I can then flip the, the blank over, realign it to the center line, and then move the um, pointer bit from where the reference line once again crosses that center line all the way to wherever my XYZ home position is. And with this particular type of neck, because it's an angled headstock, I have to route just the, the main uh, shaft of the neck in one operation. Then I have to take the blank off the CNC machine, flip it around, and then I have to clamp it so that the headstock is flat. And that's why I have two different reference lines here. One is for registering when it's carving the shaft. The other is for when I'm uh, registering to cut the headstock uh, shape and its thickness. So I hope that makes sense. It's kind of confusing sometimes, but it's a method that I find works very quickly. And I've used other techniques such as registration pins and I found those to be every bit as time consuming and, and potentially unreliable as any other method. So this one is just a lot faster. And so far I haven't had any issues with um, two-sided carving uh, being out of register. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, let you kind of sit back, relax, and, and watch uh, the CNC machine as it does a little bit of carving for the neck and for the body. And then I'll come back at the end and we'll take a look at what the results were. The first cutting operation that I have to perform on the neck is to cut the truss rod slot. Then I have to uh, remove the blank, flip it over, and then realign it in preparation for cutting the neck shaft. Now it's gonna take about an hour to cut the neck shaft. And once again, this is gonna be a two pass operation with the first pass being the rough cut. And as you can see here, it's hogging out quite a bit of wood on that initial rough pass. It's sort of like watching an artist paint a picture. At first, you're not really sure exactly what's going on, 
But then as time passes, you begin to see the shape of the neck uh, beginning to emerge from the blank. And then once the rough pass has been completed, the next pass will be the finishing pass, which will produce a surface that's smooth enough to be sanded with 220 grit sandpaper. To do the headstock, I have to flip the blank 180 degrees around, realign it, and then clamp it into position before I can begin the cut. And just like the other cut I did on the neck shaft, this one will involve two passes, a rough pass followed by a finishing pass. In all, it took about an hour and 40 minutes to cut the neck. And all I have left to do now is to liberate the neck from the blank by cutting those tabs. Well guys, unfortunately, it looks like I'm running out of time. This video is starting to get kind of long in the tooth. I was hoping to show uh, carving the body itself, but I think I'm gonna have to push that off until the next episode. And until then, um, if you have any questions or comments about the process, uh, go ahead and post them down below and I'll do my best to answer them or maybe somebody else in the community who knows can answer them as well. And um, if you like the video and enjoy this series, you know, be sure to give me a thumbs up. That always helps. And of course, if you don't already subscribe, hit that subscribe button. And when you see the little bell icon, click that and you'll get a notification every time I post a new video, which right now is about once a week. And um, until the next episode, um, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead, and we'll see you soon. Take care.